Hey, welcome to another video with Logs Builder. And in today's video, we're going to look at how we can replicate a button that you can find on the Apple landing page. Now, this button is there uh, as of today, which is uh, the launch day of the M2 for the MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini, which is an awesome update. Uh, but let's focus on the button today. So they've got on their uh, landing page this button with this gradient border. And uh, as you hover over, it goes white with a black text and it's got a little icon there, which is pretty cool. And I thought, actually, I like that button. And also we can build this in blocks with a no code. That's right, no code. And it's actually pretty easy. So I'm going to show you how you can create this button. So I'm going to head over to my blocks project and I've just got here a full, um, a full uh, screen block with some text that replicates what's on the Apple website. On my swatch manager here, I have white, black, and I have four colors for my gradient. And uh, that's all I have in this project. So uh, let's get started. I'm just going to add a button below my text here. And um, inside my button, I am going to add the text, which is watch the announcement. Okay, so we've got our text. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is I'm going to change the style of this button from flat. I'm going to set it to no style. And that just makes things easier for us. So no style. And I'm going to give it a custom class. And I'm going to give this class a name of btn- dash. Let's call it CTA for call to action. Okay, you can call it whatever you like. Um, so we're going to do a couple of things to set up our button here. I'm going to define a width and a height um, for the no code version of this. This is um, really important. So uh, let's do 300 or 320 and a height of, let's do 55 height. So I've got 320 wide and five, uh, 55 pixels high. Um, Next thing I want to do actually, we should actually add an icon. So with our button selected on the right hand panel, we'll see a tick box here that says include icon. And when you tick that, you'll find that your icon actually appears on the left hand side of your text. And we can easily move that over to the right uh, by turning our button into a flex container. So I'm just going to go over to, uh, we've got our button CTA class selected here. I'm going to go over to our position tab and I'm going to change display to flex and then with our flex tab over here I'm going to do our right to left for our direction and you see now our icon is on the right hand side and I'm going to do a line center and justify center okay that positions everything there nicely <clears throat> um, the other thing we want to do actually is actually change our icon because we don't want a star so I'm going to choose this icon set and let's look for an arrow and I think it's this one here. It's a solid solid circle with an arrow. Okay, and uh, because we need to uh, change the size of it and also um, give it some left margin, I'm going to give this icon a class and let's just call that button icon. And we're going to do a couple of things here. Under the, our typography um, tab, we can set the height. And I'm going to use EM. Um, and I'll do a video on EM and REM and what those things mean. But this is a relative setting. So um, if, our, if our text was, say, 16 pixels high, 1 EM would make the icon 16 pixels. And 2 EM would make it 32. So... I'm going to set this uh, to slightly bigger than our text, so EM and uh, 1.2, that could be a bit big, 1.1, nice, and we're going to set some left uh, margin, and I'm going to use EM again because it's scalable, um, and maybe 0 0.5 or 0 0.6, too wide, 0 0.3, that works for us, okay. With our button selected again, we're going to carry on styling our button. So we've got our width, we've got our height. Um, we want to add a border. 
Okay, so we're going to make a, a two pixel border on this. And we're going to give it a radius of 30 pixels. And you can't see anything at the moment because we're um, on black. I'm going to give it a solid style. And what's really uh, important when we're creating this is that our border color needs to be transparent. And so I'm going to add another color here to our swatches. And um, with that color selected, I'm going to use the um, RGBA tools. And I'm going to use the alpha slider down here. And I'm going to make that zero. And that will change its opacity to zero. So it's um, completely invisible, transparent. Okay, so we have a border that's two pixels, a radius of 30, um, and then a transparent border. Now, just so you can see what this looks like so far, uh, let's just add a color. You can see our button there with the radius. You can't see the border, obviously, because it's transparent. So I'm going to set this back to black. We want our background to be black. We want our text to be white. And we can actually set up our cover here too. Actually, before I do that, I want to center this. Um, actually, we'll center it later when we do something else. I'll just leave it here for now. So uh, we want to set our hover states. So I'm going to select hover here. And we're going to change our text to black and our background to white. So if we have a quick look in preview, we'll see here we've got the basics of our button. Pretty easy, right? Okay, so uh, now what we want to do is we're going to add our gradient border around the outside. And we're not going to actually add a border as such. We're going to actually add a div that's going to sit directly behind this. So go back to our um, canvas. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on our button. And there's an option here saying wrap in div container. And I'm going to select that. Now what has happened is it's put a div, if we go up here on the layer tree, we can see our div has been wrapped around our button. And I'm going to give this div a name, a class name. So I'm going to call this button CTA and then I'm going to call it wrapper. So it's our call to action button wrapper. Okay, so uh, what we want to do is we want to actually center our button now and make our div exactly the same size as our button. And so this is the no code version. So, uh, so uh, where our width, I think was 320 and our height was 55. Oop. I'm gonna remove those because what I've noticed is I have hover selected. I need to make sure I go back to normal. So 320, height 55. Correct. We want to match our radius. Um, so we want our border settings here. We want to match the radius. And we don't need to add anything for our width or our styles here. We just want to set our radius border to 30. And on this wrapper is where we're going to put our gradient. And we're going to put it on our background. So I'm going to change our, to our background tab. Choose gradient. And we've got four colors we're going to use. So I'm going to put a couple other points here. Just spread them out roughly and we're going to add our four colors one two three four brilliant okay the other thing we want to do is change our angle i'm going to set this to 90 degrees uh, and now handy trip here tip apart from the fact that you can enter the degrees in We'll move it with the cursor. Um, if you hold down shift, it'll allow you to do in uh, quarter in in increments and um, snaps to those, which is really handy. So with shift, I can just go straight to 90 really easily. Okay, so we've got our gradient. Um, we have our angle. We have our border radius. Sorry, our border radius and our width and our height match our button. Uh, so if we come to our margin tool here, um, I'm just going to set the left and the right margins to auto to bring this button back into the middle. And we can do that clicking the A, uh, A key, we'll auto populate that, or you can type 
Okay, there we have it back in the middle. Okay, if we go and have a quick preview of this, uh, we will see that we have our black and white button again, and we can't see that gradient because we've made it the same dimensions, the same radius, it's hiding behind our black button. Okay, so we're going to do uh, one little trick to make this visible. So with our button selected, we're going to go to our button class here, BTA, CTA. We're going to come to our backgrounds tab again, and we're going to change our clip setting here to padding box. Now you probably wondered what these uh, options are for, but if we change clip to padding box, you'll see on the left hand side now we have a gradient border. How cool is that? So if we come back to preview, we've got our gradient border. We hover over, whoops. When we hover over, we have still got a gradient border and we can fix that. If we, with our button class, go to our hover state and we're gonna change the color of our border on hover back to white. Okay, let's preview this now. There we have it. A replica of the gradient border button that's on the Apple website. Very cool. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Have a great day.